Good morning, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to September here on Calm Lands. It's 6.44 in the morning. We're in year two, so this is episode 14. We have a fixed visual month of July, so we won't be seeing any of the September-ish stuff that's happening, uh, could potentially happen, whatever. We got a nice long July days. What are we doing today? Well, ready to harvest. Okay, well, so here's what the plan is. Uh, we are going to be, I think I'm going to start the day off here with a quick time lapse while I sell enough to generate about $150,000. And then we're going to move into somehow managing that field over there. I want to get it cut and get the grass pulled off of it. This field here obviously is done now, so I need to get the grass cut and, and pulled off of that so we get some silage cooking. And uh, and then we'll be able to sort of follow up with some of the productions and that that we have going on. The things that I want to get done in this time lapse, I'll just rip through them quickly before we uh, before we get to whatever it is I'm going to do here. Uh, I want to add water to the cows because they barely have any. Uh, they have a little bit of milk, about 1,200 liters. We're going to move that over into uh, into the production so we can continue making butter. And then we're going to grab uh, a bucket full of pig food. Uh, we're going to grab all of the furniture and planks. And we're going to head up to town to sell that. And then, uh, and then we're going to sell silage. So we're going to generate more money than we need to purchase that field. But then also I want to make sure we have some cash. So yes, yeah, so we're going to do that. So let's get at it. All right, I got to jump in and join you guys on, on this. Time lapse here. Uh, first step is going to be to water the cows. Uh, I got to get a bigger water tank. This, uh, I mean, the convenience of having the uh, having no longer the convenience of no longer needing to go down to the river uh, because of this fill station is fantastic. But uh, I really need a bigger tank. The, I guess the other convenience, this thing fills and empties really quickly, uh, of which I've not yet found a uh, water trailer that does th the same thing for me. But uh, anyways, at least it's at least it was a, a quick. I didn't want to put too much in there, but we, we uh, they, they probably going to need more water at some point. We just need a bigger tank, is what it is. Uh, so on to the milk next. I still really love this trailer. I think it looks amazing. Didn't get a lot of milk out of there. Probably got to start adding some cows. Uh, I think we're still what at eleven cows. So that doesn't result in very much milk. Uh, let's speed over here now. Now comes an exercise in bale stacking. Well, anyways, I don't know what to call it. It's a, it's a bale stacking challenge. So I'm, I'm actually uh, recording this having just got my voice back after what seems like about a week and a half of being sick. Uh, I had this video recorded actually for the most part, and uh, and uh, and then I got I got a wicked cold and got super congested, and then lost my voice for a whole bunch of days, and have had no energy, and I think I'm just coming back out of it now. So. And I can hear in my head that I'm all nasally anyways, but uh, my brain's maybe not working as fast as it normally does. Uh, it's funny uh, what a, a pain in the butt stacking these uh, pallets are, but every time I stack one, I know that it's worth at least four grand. So it's not so bad. Plus you can do that sort of lift and weight uh, technique. Yeah, this, uh, this sawmill, I mean, we still got to push all that other wood in there too. It's crazy. There's, there's so much, uh, so much more potential here. That's funny. Uh, I was stacking two at a time and didn't realize until later on that, uh, while while quite heavy, you can actually stack three, uh, three pallets of planks at a time. Which I should have been doing that from the beginning. But without a weight on the back, it does uh, it does mean a little bit of balance. Uh, you throw in a pallet of furniture though, and that's a whole different story. That stuff's really heavy. All right, we got that on there. Now it's time to take it to town. But before we do, we've got to make one stop, trade out these uh, pallet forks for a shovel. We're gonna load up some gold here. Uh, pig food is unbelievable. It's crazy how valuable that stuff is. I had no idea. I still don't know how I'm getting pig food as a byproduct of creating oil, but you know what? I'm not gonna complain. This stuff is crazy. And I'm taking all this up to up to town because it's just such a big difference right now. I could sell it down here at the sell everything, but uh, it's just worth so much more up the hill. 
All right, so we put it on a worker, and uh, while it's heading up the hill, we're going to start selling silage. This, tra this trailer is a little bit... Uh, the, 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 the trailer is a little bit much for this tractor. Yeah, we'll go back and forth here for a while. All right, this thing made it up to the top of the hill. Kind of my favorite way of getting stuff up to the top of the hill is just send it with a worker and meet it at the top. <laughs> Gotta find the cell point first. What did we get for that? I can't remember. Oh yeah, look at that. Over $7,000 for 2,500 liters. Not bad, eh? Then the uh, planks, and the planks weren't even at their top value, and with the environmental score we got $72,000. And another 13 grand for the furniture. I mean, at some point here, we're gonna start maxing out, but for now, I'll take what I can get. And that should just about do it for selling right now, anyways. Uh, what did I say? We need about $148,000. We got $161 right now. We don't necessarily need to rush and sell anything else right away. I mean, we might as well get the field bought and get that uh, underway. There you go, ducks, you can look at the trailer. Last time I mowed and then I used, I mowed and then I used the windrow and follow me with the forge wagon. I think what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna mow and use follow me. Uh, you know, let's put the windrow on this and I'll take the black the black tractor with uh, with the mower because it might not be as fast. Yeah, I think we're gonna do it this way because in the end, then we'll just go through with the forge wagon after that. It was kind of a pain in the butt to have to stop all the time and uh, so we could get the, go empty the forge wagon and then jump back in the mower or, like, or the windrow and back and forth kind of stunk. Let's call up the real estate agent. good so we probably only need to get 40 39 49 54 and 48 and then after that we're done <laughs> that, that, well, that's all we need at that point can i get the soil samples already is that because i haven't plowed yet you know let's let's wait till we've got the fields in there because i'm pretty sure 87 dollars for the for the uh soil is probably not right we're gonna need the forge. So this forge wagon is a little bit big for that tractor. It was getting pushed around a bit. Oh my gosh. I, every time I go to embark on one of these uh, mowing journeys, it's always a little nerve wracking. So this is a six meter working width and I believe the windrow is also a six meter working width. So that's good. Let's see if it does what we want. Yeah, that's perfect. I think this is the best way to do this with with what I have available. I mean, I'm, I've not installed. I looked, uh, so I'm, I'm now pre-recording a couple episodes, but I did look last night as I was test fitting a bunch of uh, a bunch of mods to see what might work on the map. I looked at course play and I almost activated it. I almost downloaded it, I should say, because I don't have it downloaded, but I was just, I'm not there yet. I am not there yet. So then we got to figure out what to do with these fields. There's there's going to be a big field in this in this area uh, of what I don't know. I got to figure that out. Normally I would back up and try to get a nice sharp corner there, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get greedy. We're gonna get a lot of grass off this field. Uh, yeah, sorry. So I mean we've got this long alleyway here that we can put uh, put one field, two fields whatever we want really. Uh, I think I mentioned something about a big grass field. So I think that might make sense. And then we can repurpose the field that's uh, over, that's already a grass field. Like this, this becomes a lot, this is just nice and easy in these big open spaces to do this where you got the worker following. And then if I have another tractor, then we can get the forge wagon behind that. And I don't even know how that would work. Well, I guess I could, I could send somebody out to mow and then I could send a, uh, a worker to follow the person who's mowing and then I could follow in the forge wagon and just keep running back and forth. So yeah, we could definitely knock this out as a team, which would be good. We just need three tractors, obviously. 
<clears throat> but uh, yeah, so that, that plus something else over here, I don't know what. Perhaps it's a, uh, we split it up and it's a grass and a hay field, uh, or hay field, <laughs> uh, wheat field, maybe. Uh, this is great. I mean, again, this doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, it's definitely going to be, it's definitely going to turn out to be pretty decent, I think. As long as I can pick up the majority of the grass. Well, there's no reason why I couldn't pick up all the grass, but it's just a question of whether I get all the grass mowed. That'll look, um, I can't remember which field's which, to be honest with you, but uh, so there's a couple fields that are kind of in their last growth stage. I think, I want to say in October we will have, <clears throat> when I was looking, I think there'll be something there that we'll be harvesting. I can't remember which one that was, maybe the oats. Honestly, I can't remember. Let's see if I can make this corner at the end here without rolling. Oh, should be good. I try not to turn too sharp because then the worker will have a hard time capturing all the grass. They're doing a great job right now, though. So once I get these two sort of headlands done, then I'll start going back and forth, or the up and downs, as they say. And then we may do a pass a little bit higher up the hill too. There's gotta be, what, 300,000 liters on here, probably? God, I, I would say that now with the official purchase and, and subsequent mowing and preparation of this prop piece of property here, I'm like well beyond anything I've ever done in this game as far as like the uh, the size of the and scope of, of the farm that we're building here. This is uh, far far and above uh, larger than, than anything that I've played in the game. So when when all these uh, productions are going and and we're, we're, it's time to start selling all this stuff, like it's going to be mayhem. Uh, I will break my brain guaranteed. Oof, that was a wild and crazy corner. I almost lost, <laughs> almost lost our uh, our helper there with that crazy corner. I forgot how fast I have uh, the crew set to like 43. So when I popped out of the uh, when I lifted the mower, I went. I was I was taking that last corner at 43 kilometers an hour. You know, I should probably do. <clears throat> Excuse me, I should probably just reduce it to the speed I'm going right now, or at least close. Yeah, there's no, no reason for me to go 43 around a corner. And then I don't get a chance to drop the mower in time. Jeez, this is great. This is like, this is, this is killing the last, uh, the last, I should have done this in the last time I mowed, but I didn't have a tractor, I guess, an extra tractor when I started. No problem, didn't miss a, didn't miss a drop. That worker is falling behind, come on worker. It's nine o'clock, we've already made uh, some substantial income. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. As long as we, as long as we keep producing things, uh, I mean, you don't even necessarily have to wait until they're at their most. Imagine when we get to the point where we can actually wait until the crops or whatever it is we're, we're selling is, is worth its maximum amount. Like I probably, I think I could have got about six or eight grand more for the planks in that uh, had we waited until prime season. Um, the silage is worth almost a hundred dollars per thousand liters more in prime season. This, uh, yeah, the, this, <laughs> it's going to be pretty stupid when we start, uh, when we start maximizing. We still have to buy a house. So I think what I, I, what I really need to do, um, so at some point here, we will no longer need to put in, you know, big expensive productions. Uh, likely that'll be once we've upgraded our our bird uh, business to the large building that I want to do. Then we'll begin preparing an area to, to build our home. We'll probably start by uh, literally prepping an area, building a pad and, and maybe a bit of like rock landscaping and a driveway and stuff. And then, and then we'll sort of save up and eventually put our house in um, but we're gonna need to have a, a bunch of a, a like quite a buffer to be able to do that not you know wake up and we have four thousand dollars and go sell a bunch of stuff so we can build a house I don't know if you caught it but um, 
when uh, when I was loading the planks, I was checking to see how much wood was still in the uh, whoa in the sawmill there, and uh, we still have like seventy thousand liters of uh, of wood in there, which is which is cool because I've really not shoved a lot more in there. Like it's that I mean the original hundred thousand we put in there was still feeding off of that. I mean I, I might have put maybe 10,000 liters into it since then, but not, not a lot. All right, making one last pass on the outside here. I couldn't help myself. I'm like, I gotta be able to grab one more, one more line along here. I won't go any further, but how could I not? Look at all this luscious grass. I was tempted to go all the way up to the tree line, but I figured, you know what? Let's not get greedy. It'll be there if we need it. And I'm, I doubt we'll need it. <laughs> So uh, lots of time to think about what uh, what what the plan is going to be here, and uh, definitely uh, a very large gra portion of this will be grass field, uh, starting down this end, and we're going to work our way back up, and then just like another field basically. So we'll end up with uh, two fields in this area. Oh yeah, I got one strip down the middle here. I'm gonna see if I can get the windrow to merge this the piece that I missed and then this other windrow that he already made at least half of this is going to be grass field more than half I think because halfway is pretty much the driveway there I think oh, somehow we're gonna get over here now vehicles broken all right, anyways, let's let's not mow. We're not worried about the rest of this. Let's go park this because now we have a broken vehicle. <laughs> Workers stopped. Your vehicle's broken. I was trying to figure out the the way the best way to make uh, the best use of your time. Uh, obviously, uh, we started off with a pretty substantial time lapse ish. Uh, I don't know whether that's going to also include some slowed down and maybe some voiceover parts. Uh, we'll have to sort of see how that all shakes out. So I'm not sure how long that's going to be. Um, and then, and then obviously, uh, we have the the mowing. Um, I would like, if it's possible, to get a uh, a building put in here in this episode uh so let's shut this off let's shut this off let's take over so we'll just get this we'll get this piece wind road up and then uh we'll go fix this thing it doesn't look like the vehicle should be broken down but uh oh, it's about half this thing seems to go uh like seems to drop often like I swear we just repaired this but we do have 47 hours on it already oh yep there it goes come on let's just get there yes yeah, so I think what I'll do is we're, we may pick the shed right now we'll see how flat this is up here um we'll oh sorry we'll yeah, uh, actually, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> we'll, we'll sort of test fit for a shed. We'll figure out how much grass I got to pick up. Maybe I'll get the grass picked up. We'll put the shed in. We'll get some stuff put away. And then uh, and then the balance of picking up and uh, potentially even cutting the two fields, I might do uh, between episodes again. And then when, uh, when you're back the next time, I think it'll be uh, harvesting and uh, planting, basically. Is, is what I think is going to happen. Uh, okay, so let's just take a quick look here at a couple of the buildings. I think I think something just big and open. And and we're going to see just how sloped this actually is. So if we go sheds. <laughs> all the way over I don't think we want to get into the hundreds of thousands of dollars but these uh, that's 200,000 we don't have we don't have to go to 200,000 and get a good shed there's a lot of them that are less than a hundred grand let's look less than a hundred grand actually not the Emerald Coast one there's another one like this I really like 
Yeah, like these are wicked. Well, it's just gonna, so basically I'm never gonna know how sloped this actually is. I can tell that it's sloped just by looking at it, but I won't know because it's not telling me. So what I'll end up doing is we're, once, once we figure out what we wanna put in here, maybe we won't be putting in because we only have $13,000 and, uh, and we're not gonna sit there and sell uh, all the silage and stuff we need. So this may be, this may be in there by the next time we meet also. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna have to level out the ground substantially I think and then uh, and then we'll have to basically place the the shed this would be nice too save a couple bucks pick some color oh my gosh what do you think yeah this is this just screams put a shed in here it was either gonna be here or this is partly what I was thinking about in this area here. Actually, that make me, might make more sense, wouldn't it? This is why I was thinking about rehoming this area, like even just this whole section, because if I... Just trying to think about combines and travel and stuff. Yeah, you know what? This might make more sense, eh? This is not flat by any means, uh, so I'm gonna have to play with the terrain here, but this could be sort of a future home for one, if not a couple of these, and then, and then perhaps some beefier silos than what we have there. Yeah, I kind of like that. All right, just checking in here. We are sitting with, uh, well, there's about 600, so this is our fifth, our fifth load, I think. So we're just about to hit 500,000 liters of grass and 115,000 liters of silage. And as you can see, there's still more. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I swear at one point there, I was like, well, I don't know what to do in this episode. Maybe we'll just uh, skip to the next one. But I think what we're gonna end up doing here is actually uh, including everything. So. Once I get, uh, I won't obviously include the entire, uh, you know, windrow and the entire the mowing and windrow and all that stuff and and the entire um, uh, like this part picking it up. But uh, but I'll I'll definitely make sure there's enough of it because I think after this we're going to uh, take the cultivator out and we're going to rip the grass field uh, so we can see exactly what. Uh, So we can see exactly how big that's going to be. Yeah, that's going to be massive. I want to make sure that we can at least, I mean, we'll get an idea how much grass we took off of this currently, but um, you know, we want to make sure that you can at least get a couple hundred liters. Like right now with five loads at 38,000, uh, what is that? About 150, 100, it was about 190,000, I guess. Is that right? I guess so. Yeah. So if we if we don't do if we do like two thirds of the field, we should be able to get two hundred thousand liters every time we mow this. That's a uh, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a lot of grass to me. So I guess we'll so we put a sixth load in there. So that's uh, that's good news. What does that actually work out to? Six times thirty eight. So that's two hundred and twenty eight thousand plus whatever we get in here. Uh, so I was just thinking as I was rolling here, like, and, and uh, these are going to be things that are maybe obvious to you, but they're not obvious to me because I've never played like this before. But we, so like, here's an example. Right now we're growing canola and sunflowers. Well, why would I pick both? Um, like, so for example, I mean, the, the canola and sunflower oil is are pretty much the same as far as dollars. Why would I grow both and and not just one, right? So why take up double the fields when when I I don't need to? So just I'm, th I'm thinking that maybe what I should be doing is is uh, should be farming with a little bit more purpose. 
Um, you know, for example, if I only had canola with the intention of taking straw off of it, not granted not very much, but some, and the canola itself, which I could then use to make oil, that would be great. Uh, if I have something that I'm growing to feed the chickens, which then, or the ducks, which then also would result in straw, uh, because we have the straw production and we need straw for the TMR. And then, and then I have something like perhaps oats, uh, because, uh, uh, allegedly that has the best or has a good, good mix of, uh, straw and, and I can make flour out of it. Uh, you know, maybe maybe I only grow those three things. I'm probably missing something there, but you know, why ever grow anything else? You know, and then I can kind of grow it on a bigger scale. But I say 20, uh, 228,000 plus what's there? 227.5 basically. So about 250,000 liters we just pulled off of there. Not so bad. But yeah, I think as we plant. So and here's a crazy idea. Maybe it's not so crazy, but there you go. Come on, every kid should know how to get up on top of a roof. Okay, currently soybeans at the end there, canola right here, and we're talking about extending the canola field. Well, perhaps we should make that just one field and like, let's say for example, that's canola and we extend it a little ways over here. So that's just one big ass canola field. Then uh, we combine the two fields in the middle and that becomes a wheat field. And then we perhaps even combine the two fields on the end and that becomes oats. So we have oats, we have wheat and we have canola. So we're growing for oil, not to mention the olive oil that we're growing over there, but we have uh, oil production. We have uh, grain, which, uh, we, you know, with the wheat and then also we'd be feeding the chickens. Uh, and maybe there's a better option, but I'm just going to go with that right now. And then, uh, and then oats down there for the uh, flour, and uh, and and obviously we can take straw off of each one of those. Then we make one gigantic grass field over here, and then we, you know, do something with that smaller piece over there. Maybe something really stupid like vineyards, <laughs> or a small root crop field or definitely maybe let's pretend I never said that but we'll figure it out but I think maybe that makes sense right because then we're we're farming with purpose whether or not we're rotating I guess we have, is that a thing do we have to rotate the fields uh rotate one crop in and one crop out but I, I kind of I'm kind of thinking maybe that might be something we do so we may be merging some fields as we go forward to to sort of just make it bigger or maybe we maybe you know for example where the oats are maybe it's just two oat fields and not you know we're not merging that for example just so we we in the future have the flexibility to uh you know to w the flexibility that two fields provides i guess is what i'm trying to say so just a just a thought there i kind of like that idea but uh, we'll see we'll see if that uh changes between now and who knows when as it so often does yeah and then the thing too is if so once this the the canola and the soybeans are harvested uh i can drag the wood across this grass field, right? So that should be all right. I mean, maybe, maybe I just line it up with this field. And then maybe that field just stays grass. And then we have grass here. We have grass on that side. We do what we're gonna do with that one piece we were talking about. Let's make a field. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. I'm gonna keep this a little closer to the road. Then when we purchase that side of the road, <laughs> somewhere I need to fit that giant chicken building. Yeah, look at that, 36.75 for soil samples. A little bit different than the first time we tried. The, uh, Audio recording when I was originally uh, playing this section uh, pooped out on me. So you've got me, voiceover guy, who just got over a cold again. Hello. <laughs> uh, something satisfying about uh, fresh lime down on a fresh field, isn't there? Then your tractor gets filthy. So anyways, like I may or may not have mentioned, we're gonna make that a, a grass field. Oh, this was a this was fun. I've got this bag of seed and this bag of fertilizer sitting right there. I didn't want to destroy the crop in the field. 
So I did my best to try to get close to it and pick that stuff up, but it just was not happening. So I gave up. So we're going to set this to grass and then put a worker on that. And then I... At the time I recorded this, I found what I thought was going to be a good solution for uh, having seed and fertilizer available at the field for my worker uh, now that I'm using this fill station. So we're going to rip around and make that happen. There's a, uh, it's like a seed bucket, I guess. Seed Pro Box. So it comes with uh, about 1,500 liters of seed already, but they're refillable. So I thought this might be a good uh, a good option for me. Uh, you have to, I think you could probably uh, use pallet forks to pick it up, but I've been attaching it to the front of the tractor. And then we'll pick one more up, but now I gotta empty this one before I can uh, put fertilizer into it. So I figured I may as well go to the places where we're going to need seed. That guy also needs fertilizer, so he's going to sit there and wait for us. I have another trailer here that uh, the planter, it needs seed. It doesn't need much, I don't think. And, uh, and then I can place any of the excess into the distributor uh, because as long as I'm not distributing the seed, I can always uh, come back and take it out. I just got to remember to do that since I paid for it already. But yeah, at time of recording, I thought this was the best option. Actually, uh, last night on Discord, I got a, a message from Josh Gaming Joy. He's got potentially a better solution for having uh, having the material available on the field. So we're going to check that solution out. Maybe it'll show up in, uh, in future episodes here. Actually, in, in a future episode, I'll, I'll say right now, but I do discover how to fill directly into the planter and cedar. Uh, I don't know, I was doing something wrong and I figured out how to open up the doors. Um, so it doesn't come into play for a couple episodes, but that, uh, but still it doesn't change the fact that I'm way out in the field and I, when I need seed, I'm not going to drive back into the fill station every single time. I could put fill stations all over the place, but, uh, I kind of wanted some way to cart it back and forth. I thought I, originally I thought just having a nice, uh, you know, a trailer set up for each would be, would be great. Cause I could just pull that out like a utility trailer, but I didn't really find anything I liked. So we are going to have so much grass available by the end of this episode. Uh, so much grass cooking in the silage uh, in the fermenter. But I want to get this mowed. This will probably be the last time I mow a portion of this field anyways because I do want to block some of it off and turn it into... Uh, oh, this is where I ran out of money and couldn't pay the worker anymore. Um, I do want to block some of it off and turn it into a pad for, uh, for so we can finally put in some larger uh, sheds. So actually, I believe in this mow, I also get the idea to expand that grass field. Nothing like expanding an existing grass field while I've just made this giant grass field. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta ignore the warnings. You don't have access to this land when I'm clearly on the land that I own.
right, here's where these things come into play. I mean, I basically figured I could just leave them at the side of the field. Rip them over. I, I think ideally what I need is another tractor because then I could put one tractor on these boxes and then uh, have somebody in the field working and then still be able to do something else with a, with a third tractor. A little bit of foreshadowing there. Fill her up. That's it. Then I just got to go fill them up again and uh, they're ready to go. So I don't know. I mean, it seems like a reasonable solution, but then you got to just move these boxes around. It'd be nice if you had like a double box where you could hold seed and fertilizer in it. Yeah, see, a third tractor would be great. Then back to mowing. Yeah, there we go. So it's like almost five o'clock, the sun's starting to go down and I had this idea in my head that I should probably expand that field, which at that point I might as well go and collect all this grass. I'd made a, um, Mrs. Sim Gamer uh, had posted a, an episode and uh, had had man managed to make grass work finally. So we sort of commented on it, uh, saying, you know, how the opportunity to make some money off of grass is finally there. And uh, she had actually commented back something that I had been thinking about actually uh, in in that. Um, you know, silage and, and wood really are two ways to make uh, make a ton of money without having to go through all the efforts of planting and uh, and all that. Um, well, there's that mod, the economy mod, where you can turn down certain, like you can make a, I don't know, I haven't looked to see exactly how it works, but you can take certain uh, items, and I think maybe silage is one of them, and turn down the value, uh, pr likely as a percentage is my guess. I haven't checked it out yet. But, uh, you know, in future challenges, in order to make it more challenging, it might make sense to, you know, drop the the silage value to whatever its minimum is, which is probably going to be something equivalent to like hard economy. Even if you want to run easy economy on everything else, or even normal economy, and then just drop that. So that way, silage isn't such. I mean, it's not like it's not without its effort, right? Obviously, you've got to mow it, and then you got to pick it up, and then you got to put it somewhere, and then you got to make the silage, and then you got to sell the silage. Uh, so it isn't without its effort, but it is uh, definitely in. Uh, uh, a very lu especially in the easy economy it's super lucrative at uh at over seven hundred dollars per thousand liters at its top it's just crazy how much money you can make on it like i think on on bally springs i'm playing in hard economy and i think i've got about a million liters of silage in my uh in my fermenting silo um, but it maxes out, I think, at $180 per thousand liters, so nowhere near the $700 that you get in easy economy. So while still definitely a, a, an abundance of, of money to make there, it, nowhere close to easy economy. the strategy again. I gotta get this grass picked up. It's starting to come nighttime here. I don't think it had dawned on me to try putting the windrow on a worker. Uh, oh, I took over so I could go empty this thing. I don't, I, I don't think it had dawned on me to try putting the windrow on a worker and putting the forge wagon on a worker. I wonder if he still would have followed the if the the guy on follow me would have followed the 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 first worker. Can't 
can't remember at the end of this episode how much we have cooking in the in the fermenting silo, but I'm pretty sure we're getting close to a million liters. I know it's a massive amount. Which you figure a million liters at seven hundred dollars per thousand liters is about what seven hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot. That would uh, fund the rest of our property purchases. I figure out what to do with this little area over here. Actually, I, I was thinking that, uh, so I'm watching the cake and bread production, and uh, it's not producing very quickly uh, in the grand scheme of things when it comes to utilize, like our, our hydroponics greenhouse, for example, is backed way up. It's completely full of strawberries. Um, and it's, They're not being used uh, quick enough. So I was thinking maybe there's a way to, well, so one, I could, when, when we're really flying, I could use strawberries over in the cookie factory for, I think it's like strawberry shortcake cookies or something like that. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I could potentially put in another uh, bakery to make uh, cake separate. And then I'd have two of them going, like a smaller bakery. Share it around a little bit. I, I think I, I was considering, yeah, I was going to make some hay out of this as well. Not that I think we need any, but we still have to get that cow production, uh, that cow business ramped up, so they'll be eating like crazy at some point here. I think we have more than enough uh, in reserve, though, that, that we don't have to worry about it. This was just filling up so fast. The, it's amazing how much faster the forge wagon fills up when you're uh, when you've got a nice cultivated and cared for field of grass versus the map grass Trying to get all the little scraps here. Got this guy following me. All right, it's almost sundown and we're picking up the last of the grass. That was a full day. In the future, we'll have to figure out what to do with this little field extension down here. Uh, so the next, I believe the next couple of episodes I uh, recorded while I was, I had a raging cold. Uh, so I didn't actually record, uh, record like uh, my voice. I just recorded the gameplay because uh, I couldn't not play the game. And uh, so we'll be doing some voiceovers there as well. And then we'll get those uh, posted as quickly as I can so we can get caught up here. I, uh, yeah, look at that. We got almost, that was 900,000 liters of uh, grass cooking for silage, and then we had over 100,000 liters of silage already in there. So if everything turned to silage in there, we'd have a million liters of silage. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. That's a big number. But anyways, yeah, I got, uh, I was trying not to get too far ahead, so I, I think I only played a couple episodes, but uh, there's a, some, some, a few more things, a few more additions coming. <laughs> Definitely try not to go too crazy with uh, with productions and everything else, but uh, we're almost at our limit, I think. But yeah, I mean, uh, with the sun down and uh, our silage, our fermenting silo plugging away here, I think that's where this one's going to end. Uh, that's September, uh, year two. Things are looking up here on the farm and uh, some, some big things yet to come. So yeah, I appreciate you watching and thanks for this little bit of a little bit of a jumbled episode with a combination of weird nasally voiceover and, and everything else but but uh, beyond that uh, thanks so much for all the support keep those comments coming and uh, we'll see you in the next one